Arthur, let, let's just start here. How many guys are actually going to be here today because everything's voluntary again and, and sure. vets have been? Yeah, we've had, uh, as you guys have been out here, um, <clears throat> we've had pretty good participation. It is voluntary. We obviously had our mini camp last week. There's some things we'll focus on situationally, probably more passing. Um, so you'll you'll see that. And so I think we'll still have pretty good attendance. And Mike Davis hasn't really been out here at all. Obviously, Russell Gage, we know he's been around. Are, is that an injury concern with both of them? Or is that just them kind of just sitting out? Uh, well, it's, it goes back to, you know, we're talking about people being in different phases. Uh, both those guys have been here. They've been involved in all the classroom work we've done, anything we've done, you know, walkthrough wise. Um, the whole the whole objective, Mike, is I know I sound like a broken record here, making sure we're as healthy as we can be going into the summer. You don't want people who have nagging injuries to to linger on them. We want to be healthy as we can so guys can be in the best shape they can be in come training camp. Uh, you're muted, Mike. D Michael. So just to be clear, are both of them dealing with something then or no? They're at different phases, Michael. You know, everybody's got different things going on. Some people we wanted to focus on a certain area. Some guys we, we you know, we wanted to put more in the weight room. Some guys wanted to put alternative conditioning. Uh, it's all different things going on. If there's okay. something major, like, you know, not to be evasive. I know you guys are asking and I know what the rules are, obviously with the injuries, but if there was something major, we'd let you guys know. I'm not going to play that kind of game with you guys. Like, be well done. See you then. Yeah, Coach, what's your plan for the rest of the week and uh, wrapping up before you all break for the uh, summer break here? Yeah, we're, you know, we're focusing some more on situational stuff, D-Led, uh, be a little more pass heavy and just as we wrap up the end of the uh, all-season program. And uh, how's Caleb McGarry doing and uh, Ridley as far as when you all hope to get him back and what he can provide to the offense in light of the Julio Jones trade? Well, you know, all I'm focusing on D-Led is the present offensively. Uh, you know, I don't sit there and live in the past. Um, you know, not worried about, well, hopefully we can have Deion Sanders come back in his prime or, or whoever. But uh, just, and I, I mean, I'm saying that I just worry on the present and as we plan for the future with all of our players. Um, both those guys have, have been here. They've done a good job. Got no timetable on anybody. You know, we'll see, obviously, over the summer how guys – kind of shape they come in and uh, hopefully ready to roll come in in July. Scott Bear. Hey coach, uh, I'm just curious that we obviously haven't seen Calvin out uh, much on the uh, practice field, but how is how has he been doing uh, in the meeting rooms and uh, absorbing the scheme uh, from that perspective? Yeah, Scott, I mean, he's done a nice job in the, in the things we've asked him to do. I mean, all these guys, you know, that it's not one size fits all. Every player has a different uh, process they go about and then learning new schemes and try to use different learning tools and uh, Calvin's done a nice job whatever we've asked him to do is there um is there do you think that he can be one of those um guys that you can really move around the uh chessboard and uh, create mismatches for that, that that he's capable of you know of of going inside of of uh of doing some different things uh for you well like the question was asked about Russ. Uh, last week with all these guys, when we get into to practice, you know, we'll push the guys. We'll see who can handle what. Uh, we'd, we'd obviously like to be flexible with, with multiple spots, multiple position guys. And so, we, you know, until we get on the practice field, Scott, it'd be hard to answer that. Cody Chaffins. I'll ask one more about Calvin since we're asking about him. Um, you guys went ahead and got that fifth-year extension done before you've even seen him on the field. So what part of his game really popped when you saw him on tape? Well, obviously, as you know, Cody, you know, he had a really productive year and uh, we thought Calvin's a, been a really good player here so far and the, and the best days are hopefully ahead for him. So, like I said, I've been impressed with Calvin, the, the person and the player. So we're excited to get to work with him. You've been through coaching changes throughout your career and you've watched how new coaches come in and interact with veteran players who maybe they didn't bring into the team. Do you feel – what did you learn from that, and do you feel like you have to win over guys, or is it kind of like get on board or you're left behind? Oh, I think it's all about relationship building. Everybody's different. Like I said, it's not one size fits all. I mean, some people are an open book the first day you meet them. Other people, it just naturally uh, has to happen. It has to happen organically. 
and, uh, you know, said my prerogative as a head coach is try to build a relationship with every guy on the roster, whether they're here one day or here, you know, 10 years. Has that been able to happen with Zoom meetings and, and all of that stuff? Sure. I mean, every day you're working on it. So, you know, obviously with some players are further along with others, but uh, you know, everybody here, we, we want to get to know them. And, and like I said, it doesn't matter if they're the 90th guy on the roster or the highest paid player. All right. We'll go to the other half of the background competition. Zach Klein. Hey, Coach. You can see you, Cody, step up your game. Um, I know you can't be everywhere on the field, Coach, at once, obviously. But when you went back and look at last week, uh, a specific example of one guy maybe catching your eye, uh, a pleasant surprise, or someone that really just uh, earned your respect the way he was performing out there? Yeah, no, it's, Zach, it's just part of it. You know, I take the spring, you take it with a grain of salt. Uh, we're just trying to, you know, improve our their understanding of the schemes and what the objective is. I just don't get too worked up over over spring and the OTAs or mini camp. And what's your message to the guys as you get set to break camp? Uh, just, you're constant. You're trying to keep improving. You know, as we've gone in there, these guys have done a nice job that have been here. They've worked hard about understanding the schematics, and we got to. Obviously, it goes both ways. We're trying to understand how they operate as players, how they learn, uh, their work habits. Is this continuing to improve and know the expectation when we come back and camp? We've got to be ready to roll. Tanitra Batiste. Morning, Coach. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Just wanted to follow up on one question uh, that we asked on Thursday. We kind of talked about it from the offensive side, your relationship building with Matt Ryan and his leadership. What about on defense in terms of your leader on defense? Uh, how's your relationship been with Grady Jarrett? How are you building that up? Same way with all the players. Um, you know, Grady, it's been, it's been really uh, fun getting to know Grady. I obviously had a lot of respect from him from afar. And we played against him two years ago, getting ready, and obviously watch. He's been successful, but uh, you know, I really like the way he handles himself. We've had some great conversations, and just like with every player on here, you're just kind of getting to know, getting to know me. But uh, I'm very pleased with what Grady's brought to the table so far. Okay, and kind of staying in that direction, just in terms of some of the help that uh, the Falcons have gone out to get especially in the draft, Taquan Graham, Grady had good things to say about him from this rookie class. And then last year's class, Marla Davidson, just an up and down kind of season for him. What were your initial thoughts on Taquan as well as Marlon? Uh, well, both those guys, they, they continue, uh, they work. They're, they're, you know, different points in their career. Uh, you know, it's hard to judge. Last year was a very unusual year for a lot of rookies. It's hard enough being a rookie in the NFL and then you're dealing with everything. I mean, it was you know, much harder for a lot of people around the world in this country that are dealing with the pandemic. And so it was an unusual offseason. Uh, so everybody gets a fair, you know, fresh start here. And Marlon's been working hard. I said he's just all these guys, all you guys want to improve. Uh, you know, TQ, he's a, he's a mature guy. We, we're, we've we enjoyed getting to work with him so far. And I'm excited to see. I mean, you get a better evaluation, especially the big guys. When we get into training camp and you're actually running run schemes and, and blocking and you have pads on. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Go to follow-ups. Dila, do you have any? Yes, Coach. Um, yeah, I know about not putting too much into the uh, to the notepads offseason, but what competitions um, or, or how are you expecting the uh, competition level to be once training camp gets here and these guys are fighting for real jobs with, with football pads on and everything? Yeah, d -led, uh, you know, I hope the competition has got to be high. I mean, there's no – it's got to earn their job. So that's a constant evaluation. Obviously, with some more than others, you can probably pencil in. You know, I, I, I don't think it's a far reach to say, hey, Jake Matthews is going to be our left tackle. But there's going to be competition just about everywhere. But if Jake's not performing, then, you're, you know, you got to play the best player. So I, I really hope it's a competitive camp and they understand that every job is open. And about the defensive line, I, I think that well, the comp, I think that's a place where it might be really, really hot. You know, besides, yes. you're just anticipating I, that also. I agree with you, Dude. Yes, I'm looking forward to the, those matchups in there. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Ross team. I think you may have froze, Mike. Scott Bear. Yeah, Coach. Um, given that uh, given that you played um, along the offensive line um, in your playing days, do you find that you gravitate 
maybe more towards what those offensive linemen are doing. Um, I asked um, I asked Chris that question, and he said that he really liked having a head coach who who had that offensive lineman's um, mentality. Uh, do you find that you're uh, that that you're interested, or that, that that you're still interested, especially with those interior linemen in uh, in uh, what they're doing? Is there any kind of bond there, considering that you also did it? Well, I think it's with all the players. Obviously, we all go back to our own experiences. Um, you know, it just maybe I, I see things. We maybe a bias there within the line eyes, but I I try to spend time with all the positions and try to think about from their perspective, whether that's Josh Harris or, or Young Way or Chris Lindstrom or Teron Harmon or you know Eric Harris back there. You try to you obviously didn't I didn't play DB. Don't look like a DB, but you try to try to see it from everybody's perspective. And so I try to spend as time as much time as I can with everybody. But certainly, you know, obviously we we go back to our experience and. Uh, you know, I do love the offensive line, but but like all, oh, I'm gonna tell all my kids, I love all my kids the same. So, Cody, I'll ask you, uh, Coach. You said you're a basketball fan. You've been watching this Hawks series. What do they got to do tonight? <laughs> I'm just a fan when it comes to that. I, I'm not I'm not a hot take fan either. So I'm looking forward to to watching that game tonight. And uh, you know, obviously, hope they win.